All right, let's see. I wanted to talk about um, this uh, creep, this Jeffrey Epstein case. Uh, I find this case particularly horrifying and, and particularly indicative of the state of the culture that we live in. And, and it's related to Trump and, and him being president, but, but it's much broader than that. Here is a man who pretty much for decades now, a couple of decades, People have known, at the very least, just sleeps around with lots of young women, but probably sleeps with young women, has sex with young women who are younger than 18, and does this at parties, and probably arranges it for his friends, and it's kind of known. So first, nobody seems to care. People go to his parties. People hang out with him. People are friends with him. And nobody cares that he's sleeping with 14-year-old girls. Ah, that's just Jeffrey. He sleeps, he likes young women. Now, of course, when they say young women, they could be implying 19, 20. But there is a sense in which, and if you read the news coverage of this, everybody knew. They called his island. Pedophile Island, they called his plane, Lolita Express. Now, in 2008, he was actually, uh, you know, formally charged with prostituting women at the age of 14. That is, uh, uh, paying them for sex, but also rape, potentially, although it wasn't clear if they had the full evidence for rape and uh, uh, prostituting them in a sense of getting to sleep with other men, uh, sexually abusing them, uh, young women, older women, but sexually abusing women more broadly, but particular young girls. And he's a, he, this guy has made, he, he, last I saw, he's worth about half a billion dollars. He's got a private jet. He's got a. He's got very expensive, very very expensive. Um, uh, he's got a plane. He's got a. He's got a very expensive homes in New York, in Palm Springs, and in um, you know Palm Beach, in uh, New Mexico, and he's got an island. He owns an island in uh, the U.S. Virgin Islands. And it turns out that he gets he gets a short prison sentence. He, he cuts a deal with the prosecution. He pleads guilty. So he's not denying this. He pleads guilty to, I guess, a, 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 a more minor offense. He gets three years in jail. He actually does jail while working outside of jail, going to work, regular work, six days out of the week. Now there are accusations, just today, somebody's claiming that he was actually abusing women while he was in jail, because he was working outside of jail. No supervision, nothing. He gets this sweetheart of a deal that nobody gets. I just read a story about a teacher who slept with a student, she, female teacher, slept with a male student. Now he was 13 or 14, had sex with him. I guess part of the making the circumstances worse is, is some of the other students watched or something like that or... Um, and she got 20 years in jail. Now, I have no problem with her getting 20 years in jail. This creep, this guy who systematically did this over decades, gets nothing. Gets nothing. So... He gets out of jail, and he moves back to New York. He registers as a sex offender. Most people, when they register as sex offenders, nobody wants to have anything to do with them. People stay away from them. They are shunned by society. Not Jeffrey Goldberg. Yeah, Epstein, sorry, not Jeffrey Epstein. Not in New York City. Not among the high and mighty in New York City. No, he still has parties. He still has fancy guests. He still has plenty of people coming over.
People who are rich. People who don't need Jeffrey Epstein. People who want to be seen, seen with a child molester. And we're talking about people like Alan Dershowitz. We're talking about Woody Allen. Now, Woody Allen has his own issues with children, right? We're talking about, you know, Upper East Side, Upper West Side, rich Americans. I mean, what kind of a culture do we live in? When the new aristocracy, if you will, thinks they're above the law, that a Jeffrey Epstein can basically use his political connections to get away with anything. If, you know, how did he get such a light sentence? He got such a light sentence because he knows Bill Clinton, because he knows Donald Trump, because he knows movers and shakers everywhere. And he's really good friends with Prince Andrew. The, the, I guess the uh, Prince Charles's brother, second in line, I guess, to the throne of England, who's not only supposed he was his best friend, but J Jeffrey Epstein provided him with women to sleep with. That there is a culture out there that is admired and respected and, and of celebrity that we look up to, that is admired, where nobody cares. Nobody cares about little girls. Nobody cares about women being raped. Nobody cares about just sleeping around, just the promiscuity in and of itself. Nobody cares, on the contrary. And of course, his sidekick, the woman who provided him with other women, Ghislaine Maxwell, the daughter of Maxwell, the, the media, media, creator of a media empire in the UK. Again, she's a, called a socialite. She hangs out with people. The vulgarity of such a culture, the shallowness of such a culture. It's, I mean, Jeffrey Epstein, we all know, we condemn him, that's it. But think about all the people that made Jeffrey Epstein possible. Think about all the people who hang out with him. Think about all the people who went to parties with him. Think about all the people who used his girls and slept with him. Think of all the people that live in this culture, left and right, Republicans and Democrats. And think of a culture that elects as its president, a man who sleeps with porn stars, who cheats on his wife regularly, or at least did in the past, who has no qualms about this. And nobody cares about it. Nobody challenges it. Indeed, not only that, he is, he is you know, he is the, the, the president of the evangelicals. Now I am not I am not a Puritan when it comes to sex. But I also don't believe in promiscuity. I don't believe in using prostitutes left and right. Yeah, put aside the children. I don't believe in just sleeping with women because they're beautiful and as many as possible. I mean, think of how boring and dull that gets. No wonder somebody like Epstein goes for children and probably goes for violence and goes for all kinds of other creepy things because there's, no, there's nothing but physical um, there's nothing but shallow physical pleasure. Not even real physical pleasure. But the pretense of physical pleasure, from sleeping with women after woman after woman for nothing. Cheating, I'm against cheating. You don't have to be a prude in sex to be against cheating. You have an open marriage arrangement with your wife, fine. I don't think that's what Trump had or what any of these guys have. So we have a culture that is, I mean, this is, in that sense, like Rome in its last century, right? Promiscuity, indiscriminate sex, sex slaves, rape, children, anything goes, particularly, particularly if they're not from your class, particularly if they're not from your group. And nobody cares. Nobody cares. And this is the kind of culture you have to, you have to fight. 
and you have to reverse and you don't fight it by buying in to the culture you fight it by rejecting the culture this culture american culture today sucks it's bad it produces bad art it produces bad people it produces bad leaders it's a consequence of a bad educational system of bad intellectuals we need to reject this culture we need to go and strike that's the strike from this culture we need to call it for what it is disgusting and despicable and we need to offer an alternative an alternative of values of ethics of morality of individualism of life of living but at the end of the day of values real values values that actually enhance human life we're pro-sex real sex proper sex sex with somebody you share values with where you can gain the full physical pleasure that you can get from the sex and the immense spiritual benefits the combination of the spiritual and the material the combination of mind and body Today you have the Puritans who hate sex and the materialists who can't have enough of it. But it's meaningless to them. It's cheap. It's not even pleasurable. It's why they have to make it so weird. So, it's not that we need Gulch Gulch. It's what we need is a rebellion right here, right now. And not a political rebellion, a cultural rebellion. A rebellion against a modern art, so-called art that's out there. A rebellion against the culture's attitude towards sex. A rebellion against the, 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 the narcissism of the elites. A rebellion against of disgusting, horrible political leaders, a rebellion against the culture, American culture. And not just anti, but for. For a morality, a morality of virtue, a morality of individualism, a morality of individuals seeking life, life as a rational being, life as mind and body. And the art that that requires. And ultimately the political system and the political leaders that that requires. And unless you fight for that, then this is only going to get worse. Only going to get worse. The world in which we live, the culture in which we live, the country in which we live, will burn. Well, the new intellectual then, you would, you would imagine, would be a fairly recent phenomenon. Uh, have there been any this type in the past that you can remember that you would like to point out? Uh, what type I would hold as the new intellectual? Right. Well, only to name a few historical examples in the most general way. Mm -hmm. Aristotle is yeah. the man I would talk as, take as the first intellectual in history, in the best sense of the word. The founding fathers were Americans, America's first intellectuals because they were thinkers who were also men of actions. They were the men who knew that a reason is man's guide to reality that man can achieve an ideal way of life on earth by means of his reason, and that man requires freedom in order to be guided by his judgment and his mind, that man should deal with one another by trade, by persuasion, but not by force and compulsion. It's the founding fathers who established uh, in the United States of America the first and only free society in history, and the economic system, which was the corollary of the American political system, was capitalism. The system of total, unregulated, laissez-faire capitalism. This was the basic principle of the American uh, way of life or the American political system. However, in practice, it has never yet been practiced. A total separation of government and economics had not been established from the first. It was implied in principle, but certain loopholes or contradictions were still allowed into the American setup and into the American Constitution, which permitted 
collectivist influences to undermine the American way of life, and today it is practically collapsing. Today there is nothing left except an undefined tradition. The active intellectual direction of our society at present is anti-American and anti-intellectual. It is going back to the primordial mysticism of dictatorships and rule by force. Therefore, the new intellectuals now should be those men who will stand up for two fundamental values, the value of their own life, of their inalienable rights, of their self-esteem, their independence, and the value of a non-coercive free society in which men do not use force against one another. Mm -hmm.